If you have understood octahedral, you know, octahedral splitting, you should be able to understand tetrahedral. But of course, the problem being it is tetrahedral, the angles are different. Octahedral, good thing it was on dz square, you have one orbital clearly, and the ligands are coming from there. D, x, y, x, and y direction ligands are coming directly. But in tetrahedral, you see the orbitals in, in somewhere, the ligands are coming from somewhere. It is not like head on collision, it is not exactly direct approach of the ligand, I mean direct overlap of the ligand and orbital are not happening. That is where of course, you should be able to understand the destabilization will not be that much. So, the splitting of course, there will be splitting also in the d orbital splitting extent to which the splitting will occur will not be too much, because in octahedral it is a head on collision bang, in, in tetrahedral it is going to be side on just touching and going almost kissing and running away right. So, that is where that is where you will see in tetrahedral you will never have any low spin configuration means the extent of separation between T and E or in this case we do not say T 2 G and E G we say T 2 and E ok same D x y D y z D x z is T 2 E not E G E is D x 2 y 2 D z 2 ok will come. Since octahedral we are saying that of course, six of the ligands are approaching in tetrahedral only four of them are approaching. In octahedral it is a head on collision, in tetrahedral it is you know just sidewise you can say or very little collision, very little good overlap. The repulsion from the ligand or ligand electron will not be able to repel the metal electron that efficiently as you see in the octahedral case. So, the splitting the repulsion is this that splitting is nothing but difference between E and T 2 whatever we were saying this 3 orbital versus 2 orbital splitting the distance. So, that is never going to be too high if it is not too high if it is all always like this at let us say room temperature the electron can access all of them. So, it is always going to be high spin we do not have to worry about low spin in tetrahedral case only in octahedral case we have to think about low spin and high spin ok clear. The reason is very simple number of ligands are less. So, repulsion is less 4 versus 6 4 ligands versus 6 ligand tetrahedral means 4 ligands and also the approach of the ligand with respect to the orbital is not going to be direct it is almost a side approach ok. Now, so, the ligands as you can see alter occupying alternate orbital over here alter alternate sorry occupy alternate corner 1, 2, 3 and 1 in the back 4 ligands right. You imagine just methane CH 4 how the hydrogens are with respect to carbon. Imagine carbon is your metal center and 4 hydrogens are your 4 ligand that is how it is right. It is not octahedral it is tetrahedral. So, E orbitals we will be calling E orbitals and T 2 orbitals ok. So, here they are in this case actually I will say you why it, it will be in this case it is the reverse of octahedral these are going to be stabilized D G 2 and D x 2 y 2 are going to be stabilized because these orbitals are the ones which will be facing this ligand list. So, li ligand is here, ligand is there, ligand is there and ligand is there. So, can you see the 4 ligands, 4, four black dots, strong dots 1, 2, 3, 4. See the d z square orbital and d x 2 orbital y 2 orbital, these 2 orbitals are facing the ligand least, they are farthest from the ligand. 
that means that repulsion will be less or they are the one which is going to be stabilized. If you think about the octahedral, of course, from the free metal ion everything destabilized and from there further stabilized and further destabilized, right. Over here, the pattern is just opposite. 3, 2 was for octahedral, it will be 2, 3. T2, sorry, E will be the stabilized one, T2, not T2G mind you, not EG again, E and T2, these are coming from symmetry elements which will not be taught. So, it is like this. So, these two orbitals are stabilized, these three are destabilized, relatively destabilized. See, once again, these are the four ligands, 1, 2, 3, 4. These four ligands are with respect to this, it is more close to, to the orbitals. These, these ligands are close to these orbitals more compared to these. You just see, look at the angle, how far they are, you will be able to see it. Okay? It is going to be little bit twisted from octahedral because octahedral it was clear cut. Tetrahedral you have to see that 109 angle, 109 angle, right? that is the angle between the two, you know, two, two ligands going to be, right. Now, uh, <coughs> these are the one, t, these d orbitals are the one which is going to be destabilized compared to these two, that is because they are facing the ligand more efficiently or their ligand electrons and metal electrons are going to repel each other more strongly because they are coming too close to each other compared to that we see in here. Clear? You see it, it should be fine. Now, also just numerically speaking, you can see that the E orbitals are of course 109 angle total if you see the geometry and it is two of them. So, it is 54 degree with respect to the center you can you can come look at if it is not clear you can come back i'll just t2 is nearer to the ligand hence higher energy e is farther from ligand then thereby lesser energy i think this picture gives you the clear idea where the ligands are and where the orbitals are it's a 3d view no amount of explanation will not be good enough you have to look at i cannot explain perfectly you have to look at okay now so, if you look at delta G and delta T in delta 0, delta 0 it I meant actually delta octahedral, delta T means delta tetrahedral, this is the splitting. Okay. Now, this splitting delta 0 will be very high that is what we are saying compared to delta T. What is the reason? Once again, four ligand versus six ligands. You have six ligands for octahedral, you have four ligands for tetrahedral. Thereby, the delta T will be less, delta 0 or delta octahedral is always going to be more. Okay. Now, what is the extent? And also, you have seen E below T2 up. Now, overall, this is the one you have to kind of remember it is like two third and two third. Why two third and two third? So, four nine, where is that coming from? So, four ligands versus six, six ligands. Six times two third is going to be four ligands. Six ligands was for octahedral, four ligand is for tetrahedral. So, two third number of ligands, two third times six is four. There is a component of two third. And there is this roughly due to the angle since they were colliding head on and here it is a 109 degree angle is there and thereby how the orbitals are oriented towards the ligand that gives you another two third. Means what I am saying is the extent to which ligand in octahedral case is interacting versus extent to which tetrahedral is interacting overall that is going to be 4 9 of delta 0. Delta octahedral is always going to be higher compared to delta tetrahedral for a let us say given metal complex. You have ML 4 
ML6, same metal, same ligand, everything else, oxidation states stay same. So, tetrahedral that destabilization or the splitting is always going to be less, how less? It is 4, 9 times delta 0, where the 4, 9 is coming from? 2 third times 2 third, 2 third times 2 third, 2 third due to the number of ligands, 6 times 2 third is 4, another 2 third due to the angle of approach, how it is coming. Okay. Anyway, that is what I was trying to tell, all tetrahedral complexes are high spin, because the splitting is less, understood? Octahedral and tetrahedral completely different scenario. T2G lower, EG up. Here E not EG, okay? E lower, T2 up. That's all you need to know. Now let's go. So as you see, now you look at these values. We were saying 20,000, 25,000, so on, for this delta, delta octahedral, delta tetrahedral is always very small in number. If you now go back and look at the corresponding, let us say, octahedral complex, you will be able to see that these are lower in number, uh, 5, 10 minutes, 5 minutes. So if you now compare the stability or overall between octahedral and tetrahedral, if it is 0 electron, no stability, let us say we are not talking. If it is 1 electron in the octahedral case, the blue line is for octahedral ligand field stabilization energy plot versus number of electrons plot. So if you have one electron, it is going to be in T2G1 for octahedral case. It is going to be 0.4. If you have two unpaired electron, it is going to be 0.8 or 8 dq or 0.8 delta 0. We are talking 4 dq, 10, 8 dq. If it is 3, it is 12 or 1.2 delta 0. Similarly, you can start putting for tetrahedral. Tetrahedral, it is E1, not T, T, E1, E2. E1 is going to be 6, 6 delta T. If that 6 delta T you multiply by 4, 9 of delta 0, which that 4, 9 term, you will be able to see that this is the actual difference. This plot actually makes complete sense. 5 unpaired electron, if we are talking all high spin versus high spin. Octahedral high spin, tetrahedral high spin we are comparing. 5 unpaired electron high spin in octahedral means T2G3 EG2, 0, total 0. 3, 3 of them are in here, 2 of them are in here, so 0. In, octa, in tetrahedral it is always high spin, E2, T2, 3. Right? So, it is once again going to be 0. Okay. That is how for as the number of electron increases, how the high spin case ligand field stabilization energy is varying, you will be able to understand. I think we are losing the concentration. I, I am with you. Just one or two minutes. I will not take too much. Okay. Now, so let us look at this one. If you understand little bit of this one, I, I think I will let you go today. Okay. Anything you pick up, 3, 3 unpaired electron, number of electrons is 3, number of 3 unpaired electrons or 3 electrons, D3 configuration. For octahedral case, it is what? T2G and EG, it is going to be 1, 2, 3, T2G 3 and EG 0. T2G 3 means each of them are having 4 dq stabilization. So it is going to be minus 12 dq or minus 1.2 delta 0 or delta octahedral. That is the stabilization energy. Okay? That is over there. Now you talk about tetrahedral. Tetrahedral case 3 electron. It is going to be E and T2, E2, T2, 1, E2, T2, 1, E2 means 
6 plus 6, 12, 12 dq stabilization. If it is 3 electrons, 1, 2, 3, it is never going to pair up unless there is no option then it will pair up. It is never high spin low spin situation, it is always high spin situation. 1, 2, 3, each of them are 6 delta t not delta o, delta t. So, two of them are 12 delta t, one of them is 4 delta t, minus 12 plus 4, minus 8, minus 8 delta t. Now, that is tetrahedral. How much it is in terms of octahedral multiplied by 4 9. So, apparent close to 4, 4 delta o, right. Yeah, most of you got it. So, minus 6 times 2 plus 4 delta t, that is going to be for E 2 T 2 1, this is going to be for tetrahedral E 2 T 2 1 electronic configuration. Overall, how much it is? It is going to be minus 8 delta t. Now, as you know minus 8 delta t means minus 8 delta t means this is time 4 by 9 for overall this is going to be in delta 0, right. So, it is nearly going to be let us say 3.8 or 3.9 whatever it is. 9 and 8 cancel out or whatever it is, 32 divided by 9, right. So, now you look back in here 3.8 or so. So, that is how each of the electronic configuration, once again mind you this is high spin, tetrahedral is always high spin, tetrahedral high spin versus octahedral high spin we are trying to compare. You should be able to do this plot by yourself. Okay. If you think you have understood this class or if you after studying 10 minutes, 15 minutes whatever it takes you or 1 hour whatever it takes you, after studying it if you can plot this one I think that will reflect that you have understood the delta 0 and delta t business. Okay. Now, <coughs> there is another term which is called octahedral site stabilization energy. What is that? That is nothing but the same electronic configuration or same electron number if it is given for octahedral versus it is given for tetrahedral. What is the stabilization, net stabilization? Let us say net stabilization. This is two electron stabilization for octahedral, this is two electron stabilization for tetrahedral. What is the difference between the two? You will never see that octahedral is less stable compared to tetrahedral. It is always octahedral is more stable. How much stable? That is what is usually called octahedral site stabilization energy OSSE. It is perhaps not discussed in the class. So, you can understand the difference for the same dif type of electron or same electronic configuration, how much stability octahedral is going to get compared to tetrahedral. Okay. But mind you again this is the comparison between the high spin high spin, tetrahedral high spin, octa tetrahedral is always high spin, octahedral high spin. But sometime this octahedral site stabilization energy can differ, sometime tetrahedral is more stable if octahedral stabilizes, I mean octahedral that crystal field stabilization energy becomes less. That can happen if it is let us say I mean scenarios will be there where you can have such thing, we will discuss those. Okay. So, those next topic will be spinel, normal spinel, spinels are what? Spinels are nothing but the gems what you see. Okay. The, these are different metal oxides with the form A B 2 O 4, magnesium alum, aluminum, mag, 1 magnesium, 2 aluminum and 4 oxygen. Different of these you know the jewels that you see, different rocks, these are nothing but spinel. 
spinels are of two types normal spinel and inverse spinel this is the only topic that is left for this chapter coordination complex so the class is over